we are now in the part of God's word that speaks specifically to you and about us today, the members of the body of Christ. We started out in Genesis, and I showed everything from the creation of, of, the, of the heaven and the earth, and Adam and Abraham. We went across this board. This is the Bible laid out visually from Genesis through Revelation. We see that God, after the fall of Adam, and a couple of thousand years went by, and God picked out one man named Abraham and separated him from the other heathen. He, he made Abraham, because of Abraham's faith, a father of many nations, starting with the nation of Israel. So through Abraham and his son Isaac, and through Isaac's son Jacob, who became Israel, God called out a people to serve him called the nation of Israel. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ was of the seed of the nation of Israel, the seed of David. But Israel, in their rejection of the Lord, there at Calvary, when they crucified him through the Romans, both Jew and Gentile rejecting uh, God's son, God offered a new opportunity for them to receive the kingdom. God promised Israel an earthly kingdom, and he will give them that kingdom. Today, he's not doing that, though. When we rightly divide the word, what God is doing today, when they stoned Stephen in Acts 7, Israel, they rejected the Holy Ghost, which is the unpardonable sin. And God raised up the chief of sinners, Saul of Tarsus, on the road to Damascus, Acts 9, made him the apostle Paul, and it is through the Apostle Paul that you know about Jesus Christ as a Gentile. Without the Apostle Paul in your Bible, you and I could not be saved. We wouldn't know a, a message of God's grace to Gentiles, people who aren't Jews. Because up until Paul, everybody who God dealt with in the scriptures had something to do with the people of Israel. Even the Gentiles had to do with how God used them to punish the nation of Israel. That's why we rightly divide the scriptures. And today, as we look at it, your Bible is to be understood this way. Time passed. But now. And then the ages to come. Basically, in, or in order to understand the Bible, you have to understand past, present, and future. A guy told me once, he says, Ron, no one ever told me the Bible is past, present, and future. He says, you can't, you can't understand verses in the Bible without understanding how God looks at it. The books of time past are Genesis through the, books of, through the book of Acts. These books explain God's program with the nation of Israel. Those books focus on the earth. The first verse of the Bible is, in the beginning, God created the what? Heaven and the earth. And from Genesis 1, verse 2, God only deals with the earth. That's what's going on here. He's dealing with the earth. Okay? But when you get to Acts, the book of Acts is the actions of the apostles. The acts of the apostles. Sent ones from God. You see the 12 apostles to Israel, but then all of a sudden, God doesn't deal with them like he used to. He deals with one apostle, Paul. These people are for Israel. Paul is for the nations, the Gentiles, okay? That's what God is doing today. The reason Paul wrote more books of your Bible than any man, Romans through Philemon, those books that say Paul, 13 books of the 27 book New Testament, almost half the New Testament. Why? Because God is dealing not with Israel today. He's dealing with the church, the Gentiles, the church, the body of Christ, the Gentiles. He's not dealing with the earth today. He's not reclaiming real estate. He has a heavenly program. We're seated in the heavenlies. We've, we battle against flesh, not against flesh and blood, but against rulers in, in, the, in the powers of heaven. That's what God created the body of Christ for, the heavens. Remember, I tell you, nobody looked to die and go to heaven before the Apostle Paul. Search the scriptures. You never see anyone saying that they're going to die and go to be with the Lord in heaven. Israel's hope was the earth. Now, Romans through Philemon, now there's a future. Hebrews through Revelation in your Bible. The Hebrews right there, God is telling you who he's speaking to, the people of Israel. That's their race. Again, it has to do with Israel. And it has to do with the earth. God will one day give the nation of Israel their kingdom. Most Christians don't understand that. Most Christians, including teachers of the word who don't rightly divide, think that because the wrath of God didn't come and he didn't give them the kingdom when he should have 2,000 years ago, that God made the church replace Israel. He did not. 
When we rightly divide the word of truth, we understand why the wrath didn't come or the kingdom. Instead of pouring out his wrath, God poured out a dispensation of grace. But it doesn't mean he's finished with Israel. When God is finished with the body of Christ through the event called the rapture of the body of Christ, where he takes us to the heavenly places and seats us up there to serve him up there, God will again begin his prophetic program with the earth and the nation of Israel. God will give the nation of Israel the throne of David through the Lord Jesus, and they will have that land, Jerusalem, Israel, over in the Middle East. I believe that the stage is being set for that time. In order to get to the end times of Israel's prophetic program, you have to get to the, our last days. I believe we're close to the rapture because you can see the focus on the Middle East and all that stuff is the stage being set for their last days. Well, God, although he's not fulfilling prophecy today, the stage is being set for the fulfillment of it. But we have to go out first. We're studying Romans through Philemon because this is the message that you're going to be judged on right there. At the rapture, if you're saved, if you believe Christ died for your sins, the next event for you and I is the judgment seat of Christ. Every believer, if you believe Christ died for your sins, the judgment seat of Christ, when you bow to the Lord and he looks at your life, your life of service, he's going to judge on how you followed the Apostle Paul as he followed the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we're studying Paul's epistles, it's important that you get this information above all information.